yeah. Uh. Yeah, I see, yeah, you're, I see you're working, but what you're really working on? I ain't sniffing the grunt, spitting, you know this life ain't long. Too quick to keep spinning and missing this brief minute. We fidget the fit business, wish we lived this glib image. And scrimmage to seek privilege, to think we're freeze mythic. But we're too damn busy and keep beating these bleak limits. Push ourselves to the brink to be on a grind mindset. There's no fucking time to think, fuck it, there's no time left. <laughs> Take a breath, check the deck to see sense. There's work, but where's the worth if you're just free at weekends? You're working for yourself or you're working for the grind? You're working because society forced you to fucking climb. But the hustle continues and I hate the minutes I waste. I hate those that set the grid to grind in the first place. Sell a piece of life to misery to survive. We're more than just our work, we need to be free to thrive. But devised plots distract us from a better reframing. Price, profit and value never meant the same thing. You know it don't have to be the way it currently is. A life don't boil to minutes but the way you exist. You mourn your last caption, a played alias. And a dying wish there's no scripts to stay spontaneous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back, Daniel, back. Work. Back. I've been doing a sort of research project where I made up a um, Gmail account called Do I Have a DF Job or What at Gmail.com? And um, I've been advertising on Twitter. I've got about 250 testimonies now. I have broken them down into five basic types. There are flunky jobs, which are basically people who just are there to make someone else look good. Um, a lot of people sitting around the office say they basically don't do anything except like, you know, pass emails to someone and say that that's spam or, you know, they're just like there because if you don't have someone sitting in your desk, you're not actually a real effective. Um, similar receptionist that's publishing companies where nobody ever calls, you know, they have to be there. Okay, so there's millions of flunky jobs like that. Um, then you have what I call goons. Goons are people who are basically there to, um, you know, you don't need them unless somebody else has them. Sort of like army, right? If nobody had an army, nobody would need an army. Same is true of corporate lawyers, telemarketers, all sorts of people like that. So they often say, ah, oh, this is a total bullshit, there's no need for this. Um, okay, that's easy. The next one is, I call them duct tape. Duct tapers are there are people who are there to fix a problem that does not need to exist and everybody knows. It would be sort of like if you have a roof in the house, instead of getting a roofer, put a bucket down and hire someone to like empty the water every half hour. A, a lot of corporations do that. Um, so they'll hire someone just to deal with the damage of the fact that something is badly organized because it's easier than like fixing the problem. So there's millions of those kind of people. Then there's box tickets. Box stickers are people who are there to allow an organization to say they're doing something that they're not doing. Um, there's a lot of that in government, but corporations increasingly do that too. So one person said, I work at a care home, my job is to like uh, do interviews and collect data on what sort of entertainment people would like to have, which I then tabulate and, and file. Um, you know, and the problem with box stickers, of course, is that it takes up so much time that you could be be spending actually doing the thing. He says, like, you know, I could be entertaining these people, but actually I have to spend seven tenths of my time finding out what they would like to be doing for entertaining and then losing it because nobody cares. Um, all right, so that's a box ticker. And then finally, um, taskmasters, who are basically there, basically middle management. They're people who are there either to supervise people who don't need supervising, which is um, most of middle management. Like, if people write to me all the time. They say, like, I'm supposed to be making them work. They didn't work all by themselves. And you now I have to pretend I'm doing something. So I make up these numbers and I do box digging exercises or something. Um, and then um, also make up new bullshit jobs. There's a lot of people who do that. A job which is to make up new jobs. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of people who basically there to figure out there, there are some people that are there to eliminate bullshit problems but realize their own jobs are bullshit because they're not actually going to do it they're just box tickets to make them do. so there's one guy who said he worked for a bank where his job is to come up with more, um, uh, basically uh, more efficient ways to do things but in his 15 years he says he's never seen one of his programs actually adopted because they always figure out it would mean firing someone who's one of their flunkies and everybody's like, but, 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 no, I mean, you know, because, like, ma 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 managers and executives are judged basically by how many people they have working on this. We have 
a really, really twisted idea of the value of work. You know, there used to, there was a time that people thought that work produces something, you know. Um, it is there, you know, everything is, is, all value comes from labor. This is very, the labor theory of value is almost universally accepted um, in the 19th century. But they had a very silly focus on factory work, you know, craftsmen, like, you know, production. Most work isn't production, right? Most work is caregiving. Most work is maintain, maintaining things. As I always say, you, you, you make a cup once, right? You wash it like a thousand times. So most work is keeping things the same. It's not recreating things. Um, and they lost that. So, so it became easy to change the discourse and say, no, 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 uh, production is really created by job creators and you know wealth producers who are businessmen uh, who come up with the ideas and you're just a robot doing what you're told. Um, and and the, so then the question is, well, how do you make people validate work at all? You know, and so you tell them, well, it's 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 morally good. You know, if you're if you're not if you're a parasite, that's bad, right? You need to be working harder than you want to be at something you don't really like very much, or else you're a bad person. You know, um, and and then people resenting each other, and and so now increasingly, if work is about self-abnegation, self-sacrifice, mechanical moral discourse. Well, the more you get out of the work personally, the less valuable it is, right? And people actually think like that. You know, they say, "Well, you know, you're actually making cars. You're teaching children. You want benefits too, I guess." You know, there's this idea if you if you're getting something out of the work, they shouldn't probably shouldn't pay you at all, but they certainly shouldn't pay you as much. Um, so, you know, weird paradoxical way, even the knowledge that you're producing something has sub come to be seen on some unconscious and some sometimes conscious level as subtracting from the value of the job rather than adding to it.